The current controversy of evolution versus creationism is one in which you have a, a segment of the American population who, for religious reasons, has never been able to accommodate modern science and even most aspects of the modern world. They reject specifically evolution and they are really trying to work the country back, to bring the country back to what they regard as its properly religious foundation. So they're using politics to advance what is essentially a religious goal. That is the heart of the evolution versus creationism issue. Yes, there is a controversy. It's in the public eye. It's uh, national news now that uh, evolution is somehow wrong and that we have to uh, believe in something called intelligent design. And what I would say is that there is no controversy within the biologists and within people who work in evolutionary theory. Uh, they are still trying to understand how evolution works. There's areas of disagreement, as there is always in science, but there's no overall uh, disagreement or uh, controversy about whether evolution is right or wrong. Most lay people think that theories are guesses or hunches or something that you don't have to take terribly seriously. It's not such a big deal. Completely opposite in science. What a lot of unfortunately textbooks lead people to to misunderstand is that a really good theory grows up into a law as if uh, theories are, are refined and then become laws and laws are somehow more important than theories. This is a source of a lot of confusion. When scientists talk about fact they're talking about confirmed observations and facts are interesting but they're not terribly exciting. They don't they don't do a whole lot for you. Facts are a dime a dozen. There's facts all over the place. Theories are the most important things in science. Theory to a scientist means explanation. And these are logical constructs of, of facts, of tested hypotheses, of laws, of all kinds of stuff that taken together and put in a logical descriptive fashion help us understand some kind of natural phenomenon. The proponents of intelligent design, or creationism, who say it's only fair to consider their ideas have a very curious idea of what fairness is because they're not interested in developing evidence. They're not interested in engaging in this process of peer review, of publishing their work, of going to scientific meetings and trying to win a scientific consensus. In effect, what they want to do is to do an end run around the entire scientific process by appealing to boards of edu education or legislatures to insert their ideas into the classroom even though they haven't won a scientific consensus. So you have to ask yourself what's fair about that? That every other idea in science has to fight its way through the criticism and analysis of the scientific process but these ideas claim that they want to be exempt from that process in the name of fairness. In reality, what they're asking people to do is to cheat on the process of science and give them a shortcut that will get into classroom and textbook. That would be very bad science policy and be even worse in terms of educational policy. Is that the so-called evidence against evolution is not evidence. It's nonsense. The stuff that the intelligent design people are putting out in 2005 is the same stuff that the creation scientists of the 1960s and 70s put out from the Institute of Creation Research in Southern California. It's the same thing that the Bible science people put out in the 50s and 60s before that. This stuff has a long pedigree. In the trial, I was able to show how all these things come back, the same ideas, the same phraseology, the same nonsense. And this doesn't change. The same arguments are there but they've been refuted over and over and over again. So to pretend to students that there is a real controversy here is to mislead them. And the only reason to do that is so that people will be afraid to teach evolution. And that's really what they want. Well, I think if evolution disappeared from someone's education, it would be uh, like giving someone a case of amnesia. Um, it would be like asking, it would be like asking what harm would it be if you couldn't remember anything that happened longer ago than five minutes ago. I think you would <laughs> object. Um, evolution is the story of our past and removing that story from our consciousness and from, our, from the education of our children would, is essentially to give them a serious case of amnesia. The implication of intelligent design is that we have, that God is a very, very bad engineer. I mean, 
any engineer who have the sign and eye with the optic nerve having to cross the retina will be fired. Um, an engineer that we have designed the human jaw would be fine. Our jaw is not big enough for all our teeth. God making this trivial, obvious mistake and errors of the sign. Well, maybe their God does those things, certainly not mine. I don't want to have to worship a God that it is uh, um, not smart enough to do as well as a human engineer. Uh, so I think science has never been stronger. Uh, ironically, it doesn't seem to matter that much. I've been following the National Science Foundation person in the street questions for 20 or 30 years, however long they've been doing that. And uh, today, roughly half the people think that, pe that we lived with dinosaurs, uh, and half the people roughly uh, question evolution and think that some other theory, creationism, is just as likely to be true. So science gets better and better and better while the, the person in the street uh, doesn't seem to accept what scientists conclude. And there's, there's the gap, that, that is a gap, and that gap is getting bigger, and it's very frightening because I think a society that turns its back on reason and prefers ideology is headed toward some kind of theocracy. And you're headed toward Iran, for instance. And I don't want that to happen to my country.